Here we go. Oh, uh, hello everyone. This is Nick from Philo. I thought it'd be cool to do a little bit of a overview kind of tutorial of one of our recent remixes that we made. This remix actually went on to win Wheatthin's remix contest for his track, Be Like You. We were like totally not expecting to win this contest. We submitted the track like at the last minute, like 24 hours before the deadline or something. So we really didn't get that many votes on it on Wavo. Um, but turns out he was the one picking the winner and, and chose our track as the winner. And so we won some cool prizes from Atlantic Records and some support from them and Wheatthin as well, which was amazing. And the track went to uh, number one on Hype Machine. It sat there for, for I think, like a couple of days, um, which, was, which was amazing. So um, we've been getting some questions from other producers about this particular track. And I thought I'd just like do a little bit of a walkthrough. Never done this before. So hopefully my project's not too crazy, not too much of a mess. But if you haven't heard the track before, you can go to our SoundCloud page, soundcloud.com slash philo music, P-H-I-I-L-O. And if you haven't heard it before, also right now, I'll give a little bit of a snippet of what it sounds like. I'll just play like the first verse and the first drop. And if you've heard it before, you can go ahead and skip ahead a minute. And then I'll just jump into production and kind of work my way down. <laughs> That's like up through the first drop. Uh, we're getting a little bit of snaps and pops because of the CPU overload. The project's kind of big. So I'm going to go ahead and just turn off the everything I have on the master chain here just to reduce the CPU load. And I'll just kind of like start from the top, I guess, and work my way down. And I'll try and squeeze this all in like within an hour or so. Um, so let's start with the drums. So, so the first thing we got here is the verse doesn't really have, I guess for, for part of the verse, there's no kick. And then the other part, there's this kick here. It sounds like this. So it's kind of like this hip hop sounding kick. And then in the drop, I used a different kick. So it's a little bit more of an aggressive, brighter kick. Um, I think pretty sure both of these kicks came from a crane sample pack, which I was kind of into at the time. I go through phases with different sample packs. Um, so I think they're both from that. Uh, honestly, I don't think I did very much. I didn't layer kicks or anything, which sometimes I'll just layer kicks together. But on, on this particular track, um, not doing a whole lot. It's just one kick sample throughout. I've got a little bit of an EQ here. For some reason, I'm cutting out some of the high end. I thought that was coming to a little coming through a little too much maybe. Um, I do tend to, on kicks a lot for, for whatever reason, drop out some of the mids around 500 hertz. Um, and then other than that, I've got this Universal Audio's transient designer where I'm just boosting the attack a little bit to um, increase the initial transient on the kick sound. Um, and then I have the spectrum analyzer on here. I'm pretty sure I tuned these kicks to be in the key of the song. And if you don't, know how to do that you can just look for the most resident frequency 
on the spectrum analyzer and where your wherever your mouse is it's going to show you the note down here and so you can based on that um repitch the kick drum uh to be in key i usually go for like either being the root of root key of the song or a fifth or something musical like that that's pretty much it for the kicks for the snares there are no snares in the verse in the drop i've got these snares here <laughs> which sound like that. And this first one is an actual snare sample from a Ramazoid pack, it looks like. This other one is just a snap, a kind of a weird snap. Um, or a clap or something. Um, but yeah, so on both of these, I've cut out like the super low end, um, just because I didn't think I needed that. And this this one kind of has a little bit more of a thicker snare sound to it. And this one is kind of getting more of the higher frequencies. Um, but yeah, I've got the old sausage fattener on that first kick, um, which I use on on drums a lot. I usually keep try and keep it under 10%. Um, and then I've also got this EQ here. And not not doing a whole lot, but I think I think what I probably did is did this frequency sweeping thing where you look for harsh frequencies. And I bet if we listen to this frequency, it's going to be pretty harsh. Yeah, <laughs> pretty obnoxious. So I think I just found that as a nasty frequency and dropped out two or three dBs from that. So I do that a lot on sounds um, just to get rid of some of those harsh frequencies. So that's pretty much it for the snares um, in the whole track. Uh, up next, I have this drum bus here, which has quite a bit going on. Um, I'll try and touch on on each thing and not go into too much detail. Uh, in the verse, there's just this snap sample. Which I literally did nothing to. It already had some reverb on it. Looks like it came from Ramazoid's pack again. Um, so that's all there is going on in the verse and um, in the build I'll go to the build section here I've got these like drum hit sounds which are both of these came from a sound iron pack called drum core c-o-r-p-s which has these great marching band samples and this first one's kind of this lower weird drum sound. And then I layered that with a higher percussive sound with a bunch of reverb on it. In this case, I'm using the Lexicon vintage plate, which sounds really good on drums. And then a little bit of OTT after that. Sometimes I like to put OTT after reverbs to, to bring out the reverb a little more. Uh, so it's just I've just layered those two together. Not a whole lot going on. I cut out some of the low end on, on each of those sounds. Um, and then I've got these snare drums in the build. Kind of got this roll that comes in. And that's again from that Sound Iron drum core pack. Um, not a ton going on. A little bit of a transient designer increasing the attack again. The old sausage fattener again. I've got the um, vintage plate on here. A uh, little bit of an EQ where I've done again that frequency sweeping thing where you look for harsh frequencies because um, I wasn't quite liking the way it was sounding. I've got the Sound Toys decapacitator on here, which is basically just a saturation plugin. Adds a little bit of distortion and overdrive. Uh, you'll see I'm using some of these Universal Audio plugins, but um, really like with saturation. I don't really think it matters what you use. If you use Ableton Stock Saturator Plugin, if you use Saturn by Fab Filter, Decapacitator, Camel Crusher, Camel Fat, they're all kind of the same thing uh, for adding saturation. So don't think that you need to get these plugins necessarily um, to achieve the same sound. And then this is a compressor from Universal Audio where I'm just slightly compressing 1.5 decibels of gain reduction. And in the build, I've also got this clap loop going on here. Nothing crazy here. Um, this sound, whatever this is, 
I have no idea why that's in there. I don't think it's doing a whole lot. And then right before the build, I've got this drum rack that I created with, I think these are like stock Ableton 009 snare sounds. Now, one trick to create like kind of snare rolls with a drum rack is to use the arpeggiator before the uh, sample itself. So if you just hold down a MIDI note, you can set the rate to what you want it to be. So this one is 30 second notes. Uh, let me turn that on. Uh, turn this one on, sorry. So it sounds like this. And it just makes it easier to create a roll as opposed to kind of manually doing it yourself. And then, so this is right before the drop and I've got, the other thing I have here is I've been toying around with this Endless Smile plugin from Data Life and it's, it, I don't know what it does. It adds reverb and uh, frequency automation to it. So it gives it this building effect that you hear coming in. And that's all coming from this plugin. Um, so that's pretty much it there right before the build. I've got some toms and the transitions between sections here. So that's, I'm pretty sure just like some toms from a cashmere pack, something like that. Um, and then in the drop, um, I've got these sounds, which is like a snap sound again, layered with a snare drum. And in between those hits, I've just got some textures. So I've got a little bit of a snare roll here. Between things to make it sound a little more natural. I also use this hi-hat sample between one of them. Um, just to make it sound a little more cohesive and natural, like you're not just hearing the hits on their own, a little textures. Uh, and then I think that's pretty much it. And then when you get to the later half of the drop, I've got these percussive hi-hats and stuff that come in that you can hear here. <laughs> And so that's just, uh, this is literally just like a hi-hat loop, looks like from Crane again. Pretty straightforward. And then I've got two drum racks with some percussive sounds I've created with like shakers and that kind of thing. A little snare drum. And then on that third rack, again, some shaker sounds. And I think it's cool to kind of layer percussion up like this. So you've got not just hi-hats, but also shakers going and you can try and fit them in together. So they're, they're not playing on, on, on top of each other, but it sounds a lot better. Like if I were to just use this one hi-hat loop, then it would sound like this. <laughs> Which might be fine, but then when you layer it in with these. You just get a nicer kind of percussive hi-hat sound. Um, and then the transition out of the drop. I've got this little drum fill here. Which is just some samples. And then I've got this tabla sound here that comes in. Which I use a lot. I don't know where that came from, um, but that that's pretty much it for this drum, this drum bus. On my drum bus, I usually do have a couple of things. Uh, sometimes I'd like to put the CLA, the Waves plugins, Chris Lord Alge plugins, um, uh, the guitar one in particular. Sometimes sounds nice on drums. It gives you a little bit of an EQing that you can do with the low and high end, and then this is compressing it a little bit. Um, I've got a G bus compressor which is basically like Ableton's glue compressor that's probably probably not doing a ton you can see just a little bit when the drums get a little louder it's just taming the dy dynamics a little bit um, another thing I've done in certain sections of the song it looks like in this one where the vocals are coming in I've side chain compressed these drum sounds to the vocals with a a slow attack and a high knee and that's a good trick if you're finding that the vocals need more space in the mix to come through sometimes i'll put this on synths or drums just to create a little bit of space for the vocals 
to pop through a little bit more. It's probably not doing a ton, um, but just subtle. So that's a good trick to make space for the vocals. Next up, we have the guitars here, which there's quite a bit going on in terms of the guitar. I've got these little riffs like in the intro. And then another thing I like to do with the guitar to add kind of textures and transitions and things like that is use this kind of reverse guitar sound, which you can, you can either record a guitar sound and reverse it and add a crossfade or something. I usually just like turn the volume knob up on my guitar as I'm playing it. So you get these kinds of sounds, which kind of sound nice in transitions. Um, this is just a riff in the transitional part. And I like to do those things in the intro and the verse because later on there's a lot of guitar. And so it doesn't sound like the guitar is just coming in out of nowhere when the, when the drop comes in. So you know that there's guitar in the song already. Um, there's this riff here in the verse. It's kind of a funky little riff. As it builds. And then the main guitar, um, there's another one in the build that I added. And then the main sound is these riffs in the drop, of course. And that's pretty much it. Later on in the song, I have, I do have this guitar solo that comes in. Um, and these are just all being processed in the bus here. And uh, there's, <laughs> there's, whoa, there's way too much going on here. This is probably a little unnecessary, but. Um, first up, I have the guitar rig, um, just with a screamer, which is an emulation of a, of a tube overdrive pedal. So that's where the overdrive is coming from in the drop. And I've automated the on off here. So certain parts of the song, the guitar is clean, certain parts it's driven. It's all going through this universal audio plugin called Chandler, which is a pretty good, uh, sounding emulation of an old tube amplifier. Just makes it sound a little bit more natural and organic. Cut out the super low end from the guitar. Got this Pultec EQ, which is, I'm just boosting around 8K, the high frequencies there. And then I like to, I found that with guitars, I really like when they sound a little bit more, a little wider. Um, so I spread them out a little bit. So you can use the filter delay for that, which basically splits the signal into three signals so you have i've panned this left signal all the way to the left the right one all the way to the right and left this one in the middle so that's going to make the guitar sound really wide and spread it um and then this is just another saturation plug-in a little bit of ott i don't know why there's a sausage fattener on here but there is and then the the reverb and the guitar is all coming from this lexicon 224 reverb plug-in which is really nice and that's pretty much it. There's an EQ at the end here <clears throat> where I probably did the, the sweeping trick and found some of those harsh frequencies in the guitar, dropped them out a little bit. That's pretty much it for the guitar. Uh, the next thing here, we have these horns in the drop. And that's just three layers. The first of which I think is just like a stock uh, preset in Serum that sounds like this. Pretty gritty. And then on top of that, I have a sample that is an octave up. And that's pretty much it. I had um, also on this track, I had my neighbor who just happens to be an amazing trombone player. He plays in the Denver Symphony come over and record some trombone, which I'll get to a little later because there's more in this track, but I've got these in here. I don't know if they're doing too much, but at the same time, if you're generating a lot of sounds and serum and stuff like that and using presets, sometimes it's nice just to layer an organic, a real instrument in with that. And on the bus here, I've got a whole bunch of saturation with sounds like this that you want to be really intense with. Try and 
try out the saturator and, and boost the drive quite a bit and then reduce the output so you're at the kind of the same volume and just see what it does it kind of brightens it up and adds some some overdrive to it i've got a glue compressor just compressing the sound a little bit and then i've also side chained this these horn sounds to the kick drum so that in the drop the kick has space to pop through them so they come in right after the kick so that's pretty much it with those horn sounds and the drop pretty straightforward and the next thing here is this big group and i like to create like one big group that's going to have the kick side chain compressor and the snare side chain compressor i'm not sure what this one is it's going to one of the percussive sounds or something but i like to do this because you can save cpu by not having to drop a compressor on every track so instead just make a big group and it also helps to make things sound more cohesive just using a couple of side chain compressors on the kick and snare compressor i usually have a high ratio and pretty low attack set and these are compressing quite a bit uh, just to really make space for the kick and snare let's go to the other part of the drop so you can see how much those are compressing to the kick and the snare and then the first group within a group here I love that Ableton has groups within groups. I use it a lot. It is my kind of sweeps and effects group. And on here, I've got some risers. So I've got this one riser in transitions. I've got some reverse cymbal sound here. And some textures that I really like to use in transitions. They sound like this. So I really like using those. And in this section here, I've also got this like orchestral sounding sweep. And in the song, that transition sounds like this. So it just makes the transition feel a little more natural. And that's pretty much it. I, sometimes I stack up risers on top of each other for builds and things like that. But in this case, there's really not much going on. There's one riser and yeah, I just didn't think I needed one really in other parts of the song. So the main synth sound in this song is in the drop with this kind of saw synth sounding thing that I created. So that is something that I created. Sometimes like I sometimes I want to just use like a saw synth or something for these kinds of sounds, but I've been finding it's more interesting to play with other vocal sounds and other instrumental noises that um, are going to give give it kind of a unique sound as opposed to just using a super saw or something like that. So there's three sounds here and they're actually all coming from this plugin called Exhale made by Output which is this vocal synth plugin, which is really nice. And I'm just using presets. The first one sounds like this. The next one sounds like this. Kind of weird. And the third one sounds like this. And with stacking sounds up like this, it's, just, it's usually just important to keep in mind that you're not having them like layer over each other too much in terms of what frequencies they're hitting so they're not uh, clashing with one another. So this one's kind of hitting the, <clears throat> the low end, this is kind of hitting the mids, and this is kind of hitting a lot of the highs. But just try stacking interesting sounds on top of each other and seeing, seeing what you get. And I've processed all of these with some saturation from Ableton, a whole bunch of OTT, which in this case I think is doing a lot. It's off. It's on. So like really brightening it up. I don't think anyone really knows what OTT does. It's just it's just this multi-band compression preset that brightens things up and fattens sounds up quite a bit. Cutting off all the lows, more saturation, more saturation. Might be unnecessary. 
I've got a filter on here. I think in the kind of build, I'm filtering the sound in some. So you can see that frequency increasing before the build. So I did that. And then that's pretty much it. These are all basically just off, not doing anything. Again, I swept the frequency spectrum to look for harsh frequencies and dip those out a little bit. And the main effect that you're hearing in this drop is that kind of bouncing LFO effect, which I created with auto pan. And if you don't know how to get the LFO kind of effect with, with an auto pan, basically just drop an auto pan onto something. And initially it's going to want to pan things left and right. But if you bring the phase all the way down or all the way up, you have a single LFO. And then I turn this onto note. So it's in, we can set it in rhythm and and then I'll usually offset it by 220 or so, so that the sound comes in at the bottom of the LFO and not at the top, so it stays in rhythm. And so that's a good trick you can do. And then I've just automated the amount and rate on, on that. So actually what I did here is I plugged in my MIDI controller and I routed the one of the knobs on the MIDI controller to the amount, and I actually recorded the automation by moving the knob as I listen to it, which I found for some reason just gives a more natural effect and can get you closer to what you're going for. You, I probably could have just drawn these lines in, but that's why there's all these dots here. So you can see what this is doing in the drop. <laughs> So that's how I created that. And again, just like saturation, if you're gonna do some LFO sidechain compression kind of sound like this, I don't think it matters if you use a sidechain compressor to a ghost kick channel, or if you use Nicky Romero's kickstart or LFO tool or volume shaper, I think you all can, those all can accomplish the same thing, but the auto pan is pretty convenient to use for that kind of sound. Um, more OTT. Got, again, I've got this sidechain compressor to the vocals to make a little bit of room space for the vocals when they come in. Pretty straightforward there. The other main synth sound in the drop are these chords here. And I think this is a pretty simple sound that I just created in Massive. It's like a super saw. And I won't go into too much detail here, but... Basically, a couple of things I'll point out is just, if you're gonna use three oscillators on a super saw, it's nice to tune them a little bit differently between 0.05 and 0.10 off. Um, so they're not all perfectly in tune with one another and it just spreads it out a little bit, makes it sound a little more interesting. And then the other thing I've done here is this envelope three, I've dropped onto the depth of the vibrato in the oscillator tab. So as the sound progresses, the vibrato comes in more. And so that's what's giving it that wavering effect. So I really like to play around with pitch automation and, and vibrato and kind of detuning things on these types of sounds. So that's what's going on there. Again, I've got like saturation OTT cutting out the low end. This actually looks like I might have just copied the chain from the sound above and made it work for the sound too. So nothing crazy there. And yeah, so getting to this other group, which is pretty big, this has a lot of the pads and synths that are in the verse. And the first thing here is a piano. Which is just created in contact with the Alicia's Keys contact plugin, which is a nice sounding piano. I've flattened it down already, but the one thing I'll say about piano is that if you, with the MIDI notes, if you offset them a little bit, so those high notes are coming in a little later, it can sound a little bit more like someone's actually playing the piano. So you can hear those high notes trickling in a little later. It just makes it sound a little bit more natural. And then down here, I've got this pad sound. which is this really nice sound. Another one from Exhale. It's just a preset, I'm pretty sure, called Merfolk. 
and I didn't really do much to it. These these sounds sound pretty good as they are, so I'd highly suggest checking out Exhale. I've got another auto pan on here to give it that bouncing kind of feel, and I've cut out the low end. And then the only other thing going on before transitions is I'm filtering out the low frequencies more and more right before the transitions. Uh, I like to filter things out or in during transitions, it's just something to play with. But you can hear it cutting out the low end right before this next section. So I use that. In this kind of um, breakdown section, I have a couple more pad sounds. So this one I made using Granulator, which is a Max for Live plugin, which is a really cool tool. I think in this case, I just used a reverse vocal. You just drop the sample in here, and then you can tell it to loop and kind of spray around and grab different parts of the of the sound to make it sound like it's, it's a natural sounding pad or something like that. I've got an auto pan, again, giving it that bouncy effect and then cutting out the lows and kind of doing an aggressive EQ here. Um, one thing I would suggest trying out is is like aggressive EQing of certain sounds. And I think in this case, I really just wanted the high end from the sound because this one's a little more mid-rangey. And so that's that's what I did there. This next pad sound is, I think, just Ableton's synthetic string pad, which I didn't do much to. I don't want your and then the other sound here is this ARP. which I just basically took a sample and told it to, to loop. And I'm using the Box 16th <clears throat> arpeggiator preset here, which I like to use a lot. And then what else? I've got some Valhalla Room Reverb on it. I've got, this is a weird plugin made by Sound Toys. That I'm not exactly sure what it does, but it really can transform things. And so if you hear this when it's off, versus on. It's giving it that really high frequency kind of sprinkle, which I thought brought out the sound a little bit. And that's just a preset and crystallizer. And then a little bit of delay. There's a kickstart on here, which is just compressing the sound on each quarter note. And then another thing I did here, if you wanna make sounds uh, sound a little bit wider or more stereo spread, you can use the simple delay. And basically what I do with that is I just drop a simple delay onto the track. When you first get it, it's gonna look like this. And if you turn off sync on both the left and the right channels and bring one of them down to as low as you can, one millisecond, and the other one down to somewhere around 20, 30, then what it's going to do is offset the timing of the left and right channel, which immediately makes the sound wider. And, and then you can turn the dry wet all the way up and this just makes the sound fuller and wider, uh, especially with higher frequency sounds like ARPs and stuff like that. That's a good trick for getting stereo width on your sounds. And then the other main, I've got this texture here that I use kind of in the build. It's just some weird preset and massive called Fluffy Clouds. And so I'm using that just as some texture in the build. <laughs> can barely hear the other main sound in the in the verse are these plucks here it's kind of tropical plucks and these are actually both the same exact preset in serum um it's not a preset it's just all it is actually is no both oscillator and a and b are off and i'm just using the noise oscillator with this bell synth sound which i kind of like to use as a nice tropical sounding pluck and the only difference between these two is this one is an octave lower and this one's an octave higher. And then I've panned one slightly right and one slightly re left. I've also offset one of them. If you hit this D button down here, I've offset one of them a little bit to come in 14 milliseconds after the sound itself, after you have it set in the MIDI. So. This one's coming in slightly later than this one, so they're not clashing right on top of each other. 
which can give a nice effect. On uh, both of these, again, I've used that stereo widening trick with the simple delay. <clears throat> I've increased the attack of the transient with Universal Audio's transient designer. Got some saturation OTT and just cutting out the low end from both of these sounds. So that's pretty straightforward. And that's that sound in the verse. You hear. So that's pretty much it for that. The other thing I have are these horns. I mentioned earlier that my neighbor came over and recorded some trombone sounds. And I just, I basically just told him the chords and he came up with different voicings for the chords. So the first one he recorded sounds like this. And then he did another layer, another voicing or harmony. Then another one. Then another one. And then all together it sounds like this. This is pretty nice. I've panned one of them to the right, one of them to the left a little bit to spread them out from one another. And then on the bus here, I've got a slow LA, the LA-2A is a slow acting compressor, which is nice for longer sounds like this. So I'm compressing it down some. Cut out the low end. And sometimes what I'll do is use an EQ3 just to like absolutely make sure there's no low end coming through. So I'll set the low frequency to wherever I want to cut it off and then drop the gain all the way down just to like ensure there's nothing below that coming in. I've got this little radiator plugin from Sound Toys, which is like a preamp plugin to make it sound like it's coming through an amplifier, which I thought was kind of nice. And then again, Valhalla Room Reverb. It looks like the mix is around 50%. And then that's pretty much it. A little more compression here for some reason. That's pretty much it. But yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice sound that I use in that kind of breakdown section. So that's that. And then getting down to the the bass here, the bass group. Um, I've got this sub bass in the verse that's just Ableton's hip hop sub bass made an operator. And it sounds like this. And then I've got the kick tight, which is a preset in Corpus in Ableton that you can use on on kicks or sub basses. For some reason, the kick tight sounds really good on sub basses. I actually picked up, picked up this tip from a friend of mine, Timmy, who's other, also known as um, Opus Iris. So shout out, Timmy. And I've got this Voice of God plugin, which is like, I don't know, adds, adds low. It's like a low end EQ that adds... Uh, more low end to the sound and I don't think it's doing a whole lot maybe a little bit uh, I've got the decapacitator plugin I found that with sub basses you really need to saturate them and get some really get some high frequencies coming through especially if people are going to be listening to the track on like low end speakers and so the decapacitator plugin is adding that buzz that you hear that's without and that's with. So it's really giving it that buzz that will shine through on different sound systems. I've got the LA-2A again, compressing it down. And then it looks like I've filtered out like the super low end just for the verse to give it some contrast when you get to the, the breakdown. Um, like right here, it looks like the low end comes back in. So to make that part sound fuller than the verse. And then the other bass in the verse, I've got this sound that I made in Diva. I've flattened it down already, but it sounds like this. It's kind of a cool dark sound. And then I've cut out all the low for sure, like anything below 90 hertz, so it's not conflicting with the sub bass. And then I've also used that stereo spreading trick a little bit on this just to uh, to widen it up. I wouldn't use that on a sub bass, but if you have a higher frequency bass that you want to distinguish from the 
from the sub bass, then you can spread it a little bit. And then also Camel Crusher, just adding some distortion to the sound. Just a little bit, brightening it up a little bit. And then in terms of the bass in the drop, I have these 808 bass sounds. <laughs> And these are just samples, looks like from Ramazoid pack again. And with these, I've got an EQ on here. It looks like I'm just kind of boosting like the super low end, the sub end of that. I've got a bunch of a fair amount of decapacitator on here again to brighten it up a little bit and give it some buzz. And then I'm compressing it with a low attack using the glue compressor. The only other thing I've done here is add some pitch automation. So the bass is, you can hear it kind of dip down here and go back up, which just gives it some character. So I like to do that a lot with sub basses. And then on top of those 808s, I think I literally just went to massive and created like a saw wave. And just to, if you're not getting enough buzz out of saturating, the 808 or your sub bass you can just layer it with a, like a buzz like literally so it's like I've got the capacitor on here again and these are just the same exact notes as the 808s above so together it sounds like a like really buzzy but i'm always surprised at how much buzz you need to add to sub basses so that's pretty much it for the bass in the song. Next up, I've got this vocal chops group here. And this sound here, I've used in the intro and then again, kind of in the build, sounds like this. And on this, this sound is, I, I just took the vocals from the original track and dropped them into sampler and then found like one syllable and told it to loop back and forth with this button here. I've also added a lot of crossfades so it doesn't just snap back and forth, but it crossfades back and forth to make it sound natural and avoid some of those clips that you might hear. Then the other thing about this sound, this kind of sound that I like to do a lot is go to the pitch oscillator tab and turn on glide or portamento and then play with the timing and what that'll do is as one note runs into the next note it'll automatically go slide up glide up or down uh, to get to that other note which gives it that kind of rising feel and if you do that make sure that you overlap the notes a little bit so they're not just because that's what's going to make it glide up as opposed to them just ending and then hitting the next note and so that's where you're getting that rising feel here. And then on this, I've got a crystallizer again, which I think is just adding a lower octave. So that's without. And this is with. So it's adding a lower octave. Auto pan again to make it bounce. And then right before the build, I've got these vocal chops that I took from the original vocal that I'm just repeating over and over. So I think gave it some cool intensity right before the drop. So it's kind of a nice texture. And then I've also got <clears throat> these vocal chops that I'm using throughout. Like here's one, for example. You can hear that coming through. And that's repeating a phrase from the original vocals in the chorus. And I've used Little Alter Boy from Sound Toys to pitch it up an octave. And then also another thing I'm doing here is playing with the format. Um, so if the format's, I don't know what the format is exactly, but if it's all the way down, it sounds like this. All the way up, it sounds like this. And I've actually automated that so it goes up um, as the sound progresses. Just kind of gave it an, a unique vibe. And then I've got another one here. 
And then I've got Kimmel Crusher to saturate the sound a little bit. And then I'm automating the amount of reverb using Valhalla Shimmer, which is a huge reverb. OTT after the reverb. One thing I'd suggest is try automating your reverbs, the wet dry, along with the an OTT after it, the amount. So to, if you need to bring reverb out of a sound, so that jumps up. And uh, it's probably too much reverb looking back at it, but whatever. And then I've got these chops that I actually really like in the drop that sound like this. And those are just like single syllables from the original vocals. And again, using Little Alter Boy, I think this one I've pitched up an octave and this one I've pitched down an octave with Little Alter Boy and layered them together, panned one a little bit right, one a little bit left, and then offset one of them by a few milliseconds again, just so they're not on top of each other. So that's pretty much it for the vocal chop stuff in this song. And getting down here to like the vocals, um, actually, is that it? Oh, another thing I have here is in the, st in the stems, when I downloaded this remix pack, it also came with some of the original synthesizers. So I like to like subtly incorporate some of the original synth sounds in a remix. So I've got these sounds from the original track. That are just, I think in the verse or the intro. So it gives it some cohesiveness. And then I've got this reverse vocal sound. And the way you create something like that, I really like to use something like that before vocals come in. It kind of gives you an idea that some vocals might be coming. But what I'll do is just grab like a single syllable from the original vocal. So something like this. And then drop like a a huge reverb on it. I'll just use Ableton's reverb here. And give it like a really high decay time, high wet, dry wet. And then create uh, another track. Set this track to resampling. So now what we can do is record that sound onto this other track. delete this other track because we don't need it anymore. And then I will take this sound that we recorded and click, uh, go into the clip and hit rev, which reverses the sound. So now you have this. And sometimes like what I did here in this track is add, I think like a, either an auto pan or a kickstart plugin to make it bounce a little bit. something like that. And that's a nice trick before vocals come in, just to give some cohesiveness to the fact that vocals are about to come in. So that's pretty much it there. The original vocals already sounded really good. And especially since they're probably recording these in a studio that would be way better than what I could achieve. I like to just leave them as close to the original as possible. Got an EQ on here, but it's, <laughs> It's boosting two dBs up up here. I don't know why to brighten it up a little bit, but they already sound pretty good. In my head, making me so poor. Taking it in, you can't pretend you didn't know. And then this track below it is just harmonies that also came in the sample pack. And then one thing I did here, I liked, I wanted to re try and repeat this, that you do. I thought it'd be kind of nice touch to repeat that. But what I did is I copied and pasted it and then pitched it down an octave. If you're going to do this with vocals, just use complex or complex pro for your warp mode and then uh, play around with that. So it sounds like this. So you can hear that in there. And um, that's pretty much it for the production in the song. I'm gonna go to the master 
chain now. So if you guys are interested, you can see how I mastered it. The song was mixed pretty loudly as it was. Uh, so I like to try to mix things as close to the final product as possible. So you don't have to do a ton on the master. But on the master here, I've, the first thing I have is this G bus compressor, which is again, is kind of like Ableton's glue compressor, which is probably not doing a ton. <laughs> Just, just tickling it a little bit there. And then um, I've got Isotopes Ozone, which I use to pretty much master everything. I did mid-side EQing. So you can split <clears throat> your EQing into the mids and the sides. In the mids, I've looks like I've dipped out something below 20 hertz just to get rid of the super low end that we wouldn't hear anyways and make space for the other sounds. I don't know if that's necessary. And then the sides... I've cut everything below, looks like 130 in this case. I usually in the sides cut anything below 100 to 200 uh, just to eliminate any of the low end, just kind of a rule of thumb to not have too much low end in the in the sides coming through. And then the multiband compressor is not doing <laughs> And then I've got this one, looks like it's compressing a little bit but not much. And they might, might honestly might have just been as it is, so it's not doing a ton. Use the exciter a little bit, which is always good to use, um, and to increase some, to add some saturation in the higher frequencies up here. This isn't doing much. Sometimes I'll, I'll boost these a little bit more, but I didn't think it needed this and uh, too much of that in this song. So I've got a little bit of that in the imager. I'm forcing all of the frequencies below 100 or so to be in mono. So I'm making those mono. It looks like I'm spreading the higher frequencies just a little bit, making them a little wider. And then the maximizer, which is uh, Isotope's limiter plugin. See how much gain reduction. <laughs> Not a ton, like four dBs of gain reduction or something. But then what I did after that, I added another limiter, which I had demoed at the time and it's expired now, so it's not doing anything. But this is just another limiter. I bet it's getting another four dBs or something of gain on there. I found that stacking two limiters next to each other and having them both work uh, not, like, not as hard as they would be on their own, um, you can get a little more volume with, while still preserving the sound and not adding too much distortion to it. And then for some reason, there's a saturator or sorry, a, a sausage fattener on here. Someone said to put a sausage fattener on your on your master and just leave it at zero. I don't know if that does anything, but I did it on this track. And the only other sound I just realized I forgot to go over is that there is this in the drop. There is this bass sound that you can hear. <laughs> which is literally just, I think, a serum preset. Look at that, it's a Cymatics preset um, that I've just like pitched down a little bit. Sounds like this. And layered that with these plucks that I talked about earlier. Yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it for the song, guys. Hopefully this was useful to you uh, producers out there and if you guys found this valuable at all, hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. I'm hoping to do more of these tutorials in the future and just go over some of our production. And if you have any more specific questions about production or anything like that, feel free to leave a comment below or let me know. And hopefully I could give you some, some more details about, about those things. So thanks for tuning in, guys. I appreciate it. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye.